Hello again, you are watching today on ENC DSTV Channel 43 with me, Dan Moyane. Now, residents of Phoenix say they are fed up with water shortages in that area, which is just northwest of Durban. They claim they've lodged complaints with the Etewini municipality and that many households go days without running water. But officials have turned a blind eye to their situation. Reporter Nubile Majala is on the ground this afternoon in Phoenix, and she's going to tell us more about what's really happening there. Good afternoon, Nubile. Thanks for joining us on today. So how bad is the situation there of the water shortages in Phoenix? Well, but then we've just spoken to small-scale business owners. One owns a spaza shop where he sells food, and the other owns a car wash. And they're saying that they can't do business without water. Both those businesses are reliant on water. So this is very difficult for them to ensure that their staff members are still having an income, at the same time to ensure that their business is still afloat. So some of these things are really affecting them on a business level, but also so on a, on a personal level, Bradan, I'm going to show you. These are some of the issues that some um, members of the community are saying they're affected with. If you just look much closely, Bradan, you'll see that there's a lot of, of water here on the road, but it's even got a bit of algae in there, which already shows to you that it's been here for quite some time. These are the things that they're complaining about. If you look further down, you can already see the waste that is still sitting on the road. Now, we've heard from these residents. They're saying that these are many of the issues that they have to deal with as long as 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 well as the burning lights that continue to burn the entire day without any explanations as in terms of why they're not being cut off during the day. And many of them are just concerned that these service delivery is affecting them on, on a personal basis, but also in terms of money. But let's listen in as some of the residents explain to us how um, this has impacted their lives. One of the most critical issues is service delivery with water and electricity. Now, I'll give you a general problem. When there's an issue with the leaking pipe, number one, for example, and factually, Trek Haven, for example, two weeks ago, five days water was gushing out. Five days. So where are the competent plumbers? Where are the competent engineers? What is the head of the relevant department, the water department, doing, doing about this? Well, yet we have water shedding. Reservoirs are always constantly empty. But you are allowing water to get wasted. The second issue with regards to the water and the incompetent service delivery is plumbers or the technicians who are on site are generally... Uh, breaking an, an electrical cable. So my uh, point is, or the question I'm asking, why are site maps not given to the service providers? Why? Then there's more expenses. A cable, an electrical cable has to be fixed. The taxpayer, the ratepayers have to be footing the bill for it. The other issue is the voters, our ratepayers are suffering the consequences. While we can play, blame technical issues, we can blame the April uh, storm that has damaged, you don't even distribute water tankers. We have the aged, we have sick people, we have youngsters, we have babies at home, and the water is not delivered. And mobile, the local authorities, the people who are responsible to make sure that there is water in Phoenix, what are they saying about this uh, problem? Well, but then I did reach out to Etiwini Municipality last uh, night as well as this morning. I did try to get an interview with them. They haven't yet responded, but I do know that they said that they've got people on the ground that are looking in those um, issues, and they said that they were going to come back to us and let us know when they can give us an update in terms of that. But so far, um, they haven't yet responded, so we're going to keep trying them. But, Pradhan, whilst I'm speaking to you, we find a lady who's just passing by, and she was just quite touched by what we were talking about. Ma'am, I understand that you're also being affected at this point. Uh, right at the moment, in fact, we uh, for two days we didn't have power. And before it was like the whole area will be off, and then we know it's load shedding. And then we also got the load shedding schedule. But on Sunday afternoon, the power went off in my, by my house, and then we thought it was load shedding, and then the power didn't come off. And then we have this problem quite often. So it was like, 10, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, those houses had no power. 
Then I complain. We got a WhatsApp line where we send a message. I mean, all people don't have it, but I know have it because I like to help the community. Mm. So they give you a reference number, and that's all. So now I said today, in case the power goes off, because the power only came yesterday after two days. So I said, in case the power go off, I cook my rice early in the morning, and I just braise my curry, and the next minute, like about 12:30, I see there's no. No, no, I said, look at what off the power went. I went, I checked all my switches, nothing fell off or something. Check with the neighbor, no power. Within an hour, I know nobody's got power now. I send a message. Then we got a group here. I think his name is uh, Kevin or something. So I sent a message because I was saying he was quite helpful. So I said, in Kevin, I see we got no power again. Then he asked me for address. So I gave, they ask you for your address, name and address, everything, and then they don't say you anything. Mm. And then now when I, then I went back to the next neighbor, and then she said she's got power. Then I walked again to the other two neighbors, they said, God. so now before it should have like a blanket thing, but now it's like happening like few houses, few houses, and it's like, it's not only the electricity, it's the water. And now I just told them, please cancel the load shedding for Christmas because we're buying stuff and putting our freezer and all. Our food is getting rotten. But at least we have load shedding, it was planned. At least we knew what was happening. But now it's just all of a sudden. Now I'm actually going to buy some food, and food is so expensive. Hmm. The thing is, I actually my batteries and all are all dead now. So it's, it's an ongoing, most probably according to what I feel, like how the infrastructure in the water was messed up, maybe the infrastructure in the electricity is messed up. But also the people that are putting fiber, they cut the cables all the time. So I really don't know, but the municipality has to go step by step and see what's going on. Because Christmas time, last year we had the same problem. So I'm quite sad, you know what I'm saying. Because we live in quite a good area. We have everything nice, but there's little things are messing our lives up. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. I was so scared. I thought there was like a hostage situation because there was one in Verlum yesterday. <laughs> Thank oh, you, ma'am. like something's happening, so I said, let me stand far. But nice <laughs> Thank to you see very you much for speaking to us. Um, Thank you very much, ma'am. Well, Brett, then you can hear that um, from, from the lady, just quite frustrating. She's saying that she's sad because she's got Christmas to prepare for. But with all these glitches in the system, she really doesn't have much to look forward to. She's going to buy food, and we all know how expensive food has been. And um, that's one of the things that she now needs to be concerned about, because there's no power and no water. Yeah, any sign of the tankers? Very briefly, Mobile, have you seen any tankers around there? Water tankers? Honestly... Honestly speaking, Bradan, I haven't seen even one. Um, but we have heard from some of the residents that we have spoken to. They've said that there is one, but they see it rarely. Um, every now and then, if they do see it, it's very late or it's already driving out. So they have no idea how it works. But of course, these are some of the questions that we meant to be getting answers from Eteguini. But at this point, we haven't been able to reach them. We'll keep trying, Bradan, because residents do need the answers.